So, so we get a lot of calls, and um, often there's a call, and and I kick myself the rest of the day, is saying, "Oh, I wish I had said this, or I wish I had said that." And, yeah. And and this is actually kind of a longer response to a call that I didn't take. Mm. So um, we had a call from, uh, and yes, this is another failure, and if you're counting, it's 57. So uh, this topic came from Mark in London, who called on December 3rd, talked to Russell and John, I think. Um, and they handled him fine, uh, so uh, this is not a, not a disparagement of them, but he made a number, uh, the caller Mark made a number of claims. He said, God has a purpose for you. You can't have meaning without God. Everything happens for a reason, capital R reason, meaning, you know, God's orchestrating it. And how can you be sure there is no purpose, grand purpose? Uh, you have admittedly limited knowledge, therefore it's possible. And uh, you can't prove that God doesn't have a purpose for you. And uh, if you don't know there your purpose, you're still trying to find it. And, uh, and we have free will to find the purpose that God has laid out for us. So these are some of the claims he made. And, and uh, th there's a lot of junk here. Um, and I want to re reiterate that uh, a while back, I, I, I proposed that there are three pillars of apologetics. One is lies and deception. One is logical fallacies, and one is emotional manipulation. And this idea of God's purpose has elements of all three, and so I thought it was worth unpacking it and looking at it and, and kind of tear, tearing it apart. The, uh, the atheist response might be, uh, you might take Christopher Hitchens' approach and say that which is asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. There's no evidence of a God. There's no evidence it has intelligence. There's no evidence it's aware of me. There's no evidence it has some agenda. There's so no evidence that I play some part in that agenda. Uh, there's no evidence that it needs me to do something. Uh, there's no evidence that I have some part. There's no evidence that God has no means of communication with me except via some doe-eyed believer. Uh, all these things. So we've got some problems here. And the theist can always insist, well, God's ways are not our ways and that we cannot justify, cannot possibly guess his intentions. This is usually brought up with when, when we try to reason about what God would do and what God wouldn't do. But to claim that there is a purpose is to claim some knowledge of those intentions. <coughs> and this statement is therefore effectively a lie and that you're, you're sort of claiming that you know these things when, when you tell us that you, you cannot know. Um, and so it's kind of like, I know God's intentions, but you cannot. Heads I win, tails you lose. So it's, it's a little bit of a scam. Um, and then he said, uh, you can't prove that God does not have a purpose for, for you, and, but you can't prove that this flying spaghetti monster doesn't have a purpose for you. Uh, it's, it's, it's really sort of a, a, a crazy claim. And, and of course, the flying spaghetti monster's purpose would be to, that for you to wear a colander and, on your head and talk like a pirate. And by the way, he says, you owe me a million dollars. So these statements about purpose are sort of unfalsifiable. And uh, so as they say, they're not even wrong. And so this is kind of an effect, uh, a, a logical fallacy uh, in, that, in that you're asserting something that's, that's not even falsifiable or you can't prove it one way or the other. And so, and every event in the world can be spun as if it were part of God's intent. If it's difficult, just to appeal to his unscrutable nature. And we'll, we'll see one of those in a minute. Um, is God in charge? Well, here, here's some dribble from the internet. Uh, God is constantly staving off evil, restraining the fury of Satan so, so that harm and calamity do not overwhelm us. The devil can only do what God allows. Every once in a while, however, God lifts his hand of restraining, of restraining grace to allow evil people to carry out their wicked plans, but it only serves God's higher purposes. <laughs> Gotta love it. <laughs> uh, so is God running things or not? Well, if so, then there's no need to play this game of guess his purpose. You have no choice. You're, you're, you're a tool. You are, you are just a cog in the machine. If but, God, yeah. There's, some, there's a curious vision that comes to my head because years ago I talked about, you know, like God is a mafia boss. But that particular statement, which, by the way, I recognize doesn't apply to every believer of every religion right. or even, you know, particular versions of Christianity. But when you say something like that, I find that if you take it and put it in a different context, it's a lot easier to evaluate. Okay. So let's say you are tied to that chair, unable to defend yourself. Okay. And 
there's a, a violent attacker coming towards you, and I'm here, and I am the only person here who is capable of holding off that attacker, and I do that. I'm a good person. But if every now and then I go, yeah, go ahead, hit him a couple times. <laughs> I'm a dick. <laughs> <laughs> right. That doesn't make me a good person. Yeah, especially if you are very capable of doing that, right? Don, I really need you to know how much I'm protecting you right now, so I'm going to let him smack you around for a minute and then push him back. Right, just so you're, you know, on the board with it, right? And while that's, you know, while that's comedy, in the grand scheme of life, these things are coming out with, re with respect to the, uh, you know, the various problem of evil issues. And so while it's funny to think, oh, you know, I'm going to let him smack you just so you know how much I'm protecting you, uh, these excuses are made when they think God has lifted his protection um, to let him kill your kid. Hey, I'm going to let your kid get cancer. I'm going to let this thing happen. I'm going to do these other things. Just so you know that I could have stopped it, and I'm powerful enough to stop it, and I'm stopping these other things. I mean, that's, that's <laughs> not just absurd. That is evil. Yeah. Yep. So, is God running things or not? If, if he is, then... then, then Whatever. Uh, if, if not, then why should he even pay attention to him? And he's just another agent with designs on our resources. So the third pillar, uh, emotional manipulation. Um, there's, there's a lot of that in, embedded in this. And, and one, one is that you're so special. God has a purpose for you. God thinks highly of you. You are very important. And God is completely incapable of satisfying his goals without you. And this is kind of like a fawning, you know, uh, buttering up sort of emotional manipulation. But if you can't discover your purpose, it's, it's, it's a character flaw on your part, not his, right? Uh, God will be very disappointed in you, so there's some guilt there. And, it, and if you d don't do the right thing, if you do the wrong thing, God will torture you, you know, if, you're, your pur if you do the wrong thing as far as your purpose. Uh, so there's some fear involved here. And, you, and your life cannot possibly have meaning without God, you, you atheists. So, so you should be afraid of, of this because you'll just be in some sort of moral abyss. Um, and so the only real solution based on this emotional manip manipulation is to delude yourself into believing that you know God's purpose for you. And that's what I believe that the caller Mark had done. So what is that purpose? Uh, uh, what, what could an all-powerful God need from a wretch like you? Well, maybe, maybe spreading the good news uh, because uh, uh, he can't seem to get the message across. Or maybe he needs you to breathe new tithers and arrows for God's army because since he can't seem to do that. And, you know, women have their natural purpose, natural use as, as uh, reproductive machines. But what's the purpose of Ebola? What's the purpose of Buddhists? What's the purpose of slavery? Uh, air pollution, the common cold, hurricanes. Uh, I, can't, I can't fathom fathom that. And purposes are kind of creepy. They're, they're inherently self-serving. The purpose of a cat video that a cat video has for you is to convince you to forward to the next person who will then acquire that purpose. It's the kind of a mimetic sort of thing. Uh, and you know, maybe maybe your your whole goal in life is to be a tool, not only that of a but a tool of an invisible cosmic mass murderer. So, uh, and there's lots of purposes you could find in the Bible that are pretty awful. I won't go through those. Um, and what, what could be the purpose of atheists as far as a Christian's concerned? Uh, what could be uh, something, something maybe to, to torture in the afterlife and get some entertainment from? Or maybe we're put on the earth to serve as a test for the theist mm -hmm. and, to and, and to present the siren call of logic, reason, sense, and morality. Oh, no. And, and if the theist can resist this temptation, they'll get a special reward in heaven. And maybe the atheist doesn't even exist, and you can't prove that we do, so we must be just figments of your imagination. <laughs> <laughs> so, in conclusion, God has a purpose for you is so riddled with problems that it's almost a shibboleth for, for muddle-headed thinkers, because we can find each other. Uh, it embodies all of the pillars of apologetics and atheists call bullshit on it, and that's just another failure of Christianity. So let's take some calls. Yes. And actually, <laughs> because I mentioned this last week as well, uh, if you go to theatheistbook.com, you'll find Chris Johnson's coffee table book, A Better Life, and the documentary A Better Life, which is his interviews with athe 100 atheists on uh, joy and meaning in a world without God. 
uh, because this notion that you can't have meaning and purpose in your life, I, I don't want to give all the same examples that I've used before, but I'm, I'm, I will use one because this always strikes me as odd. Okay. Well, you, you have well, a degree. This, this caller was talking about the capital P purpose, right? That's what I'm talking about. Okay, go for it. Well, uh, all right. I'm not. I mean, we, I, we make I'm, up our own purposes, right? And I'm not quite sure. So I don't know that. Uh, capital P purpose is, is just bullshit. It's, it's a weird way to <laughs> yeah, say okay. it. Okay. Yeah. I'm with you there. But the point <laughs> is, you have a, a, an advanced degree. Yes. If you went back when you were a teenager and you were setting forth your life's design, if somebody else had picked what your major was going to be, that would have probably been mildly irritating. You know, if the government went around to saying, you're going to be a janitor, you're going to be a surgeon, right. you're going to be, you know, uh, uh, mow lawns for a living, you're going to be the person who sits out on the corner and, and bangs the drum and raises donations for whatever. Um, we would rebel against that sort of thing. If mm -hmm. the government was doing it, if your parents were doing it, if your school were doing it. And yet, curiously, when it comes to the capital P purpose, the big purpose for your life, instead of recognizing that this should be the same way, people seem eager to have this notion that there's a God who has some purpose for your life, that you, you are the plaything, you are the, oh, this is what your life is supposed to be about. And I think it comes from an anxiety that we've instilled in people Mm -hmm. That there should be, your life has to be grand and it has to be about something. And what are you, what are you doing? And people don't know what the hell it is because it's not true. Right. Some people do great things. Some people just live their life and everybody contributes. But if you have this notion that you are somehow inferior because you haven't had a kid or you don't have a particular career or you don't know what you want to be, this is something that society has bred into you, the, the expectations of society. And this is one of the things that religions have done to say, ah, in the grand scheme, you don't have to be anxious about this at all because all in God's hands and God has your purpose and he, he knows what's going to happen with your life and he will reveal it to you, not just right off the bat, as he wants to. Which means if you never discover God's purpose, it's just because he hasn't revealed it to you yet and you can think that right up until you're dead. And then, unfortunately, you won't ever discover that you're wrong because as far as we can tell, when you're dead, that's it.